Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today the half of uh, what I'm trying to say. Half of the country is being hit with a polar vortex today. I'm filming this on Wednesday, January 30th, and because of that, my company was told to work from home as a precaution because we have no idea if it's gonna snow a lot. We could get anywhere up to six inches of snow, or it could just rain and then everything will freeze. So we got that today, but because of that, I am home with a little bit more extra time to get ready and I'm realizing that it's almost February. <laughs> I feel like January went by crazy fast and, blah, and February is already here. So for the first week of February, I'll actually be traveling. I have to go to this work offsite conference kind of thing. And then after that, I'm taking a mini vacation. So I've actually been like pre-filming things and I don't think I've ever actually mentioned this trip at all than the fact that I'm free filming. So I thought it would be fun to do a get ready with me just kind of updating you guys on what I've been doing, what I'm trying to do, and how the channel's been. So a bunch of like little mini random updates. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these get ready with me's. I have a whole playlist of get ready with me's if you guys want to check that out. I'll throw it up in the cards. And if you haven't any like to, hope you will consider subscribing so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. Now my face is looking a little red. I found some irritation here and I believe that's from like the cold and how cold it's been recently. So I've been trying to really, really moisturize and I have these under eye patches that I got as a gift and can't really tell if they worked or not. Let me rub it in the excess. I don't know if I look any more awake, but I feel just a little bit more moisturized, but I don't like how sticky it is. So let's jump in with primer before I start talking about all the products that I've been testing out because I've been testing out a couple new foundations, some concealers, a powder, and I haven't really given updates on those either. So we're going to just update everything. For my all over face primer, I'm using the Too Faced Hangover RX primer and I forgot how much I loved this moisturizing primer. I also got that primer as a gift because I think I purchased that a long time ago and used it up and loved it. but. It was a bit pricey for a primer for me, but it's a really good primer. Okay, and then in just like the area where my pores are the worst, I'm going in with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, and I've actually already hit pan right there on the bottom. A bit upset about that because I finished my Tatcha one, and apparently Jeffree Star did a video on the same thing side by side comparison and said the e.l.f. was just as good, if not better, and now it's like sold out everywhere. <laughs> So I kind of need to make this one last a little bit until I can buy another one of the e.l.f. one. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, this work trip. So we've been planning this, or not we, my department's been planning this trip for the past couple of months. And it really, <clears throat> excuse me, it really is a way for our whole basically business unit slash department to get together and do just a week of like workshops and kind of everything like in person. Because for the most part, we're all in different places. Like I'm based out of North Jersey and my manager is in Ohio. My supervisor is in Indianapolis and one of my other co-workers, I mean, they're spread out between Pennsylvania, Florida, and like, so we do everything over like Google Hangouts, Google Chat, phone calls, conference calls. So that's what my day-to-day -day is. I'll go into a physical office here in Jersey, but None of the people I work with on a daily basis are in that office. I sit next to like my boss, my manager's boss. I sit near her. So there are people that are like tangentially on my team, but no one that I, like I said, work hand in hand with like on an everyday basis. So the purpose of this trip, and I think they try to do one like once a year, is to get everyone in one spot to do like team building and workshops and like classes and whatnot. One of the foundations I've been testing out, I'm actually really excited about. So this is from Wet and Wild, and this is from the whole workout collection that they did with Blogilates, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is called the Makeup Locker, I can't even read it, 5 or 3 in 1 BB Cream. So it's like a foundation down here, like that, right? And then the top, so this part up here actually has a color corrector and a highlighter in it. So if you flip the top up... So it's actually a cute little mirror. And then you've got a salmon color corrector and a highlighter. I've been testing this out. I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, it's not a liquid. It's a cream. 
use your words. Cream highlighters, I'm not a huge fan of them. If you don't powder or anything, I'm sure it would look really pretty. It actually is a nice, like, glow. But I personally just don't use them. Even on no makeup days, I would probably just go in with, like, a powder highlight. <laughs> but I do really like this color corrector. And I've been testing this out because, from what I've seen so far, it seems to be a dupe for one of my favorite and most expensive foundations of all time. And that's the Chantecaille Feature Skin Gel Foundation. I know technically this is a foundation, this one's a BB cream, but the fact that they're both like gel textures... Here, I just want to show you both of these side by side. So the Wet n Wild is a little bit more liquidy than the Chantecaille one, but they have performed so similarly. Unfortunately, I don't think I could do a side-by-side -side test unless I stayed home the whole day because they're so... The, the shades are a bit different, so it would look quite awkward if I were to do a split face with the two foundations. But, in my experience, I've seen... I've been using like these alternating for the last couple of days and they perform the same. <laughs> and if something that cost me less like less than $15 at CVS can perform just as well as an $80 foundation that I happen to love. Yeah. So expect a video on that sometime soon because I'm fairly excited about it. The only thing I don't like is this little paddle thing. I don't like it so I'm gonna ask my boyfriend actually to like chop that off if he can. He's got pliers or something. He could probably chop that off. Um, but I like to just go in with like a concealer brush and apply it directly to my face. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so work trip. We're going to Florida. So they've been planning this. We have, uh, well, my company has offices like all over the country. So we could have gone anywhere. I think they try to alternate the location every year. They tend to do this in... February or March of every year. I joined the company last May, so I missed the last one. So I don't know where that last one was actually, you know, where they actually held it. I think it might have been here in Jersey, which kind of glad I missed that because how sad would it be that everyone else gets the travel and you're stuck home? <laughs> paint, paint, paint. This is a bit dark, but it's so hard to shade match this in the store just because of the way the bottle is. So if I finish this up, I will most likely buy another one and try to find just a better shade for me to use. So I like to blend this out with a brush first and then go in and smooth it out with a sponge and then any other layers that I add will be with the sponge. Yeah, so we're going to Florida. I'm actually flying out Monday, so I'm filming this Wednesday. I'm going to try to get this up this Friday if I can. If not, I'll throw it up as a bonus video on Saturday or something because I want this to go up before the trip. And I've been kind of pre-filming because I'm going to be gone until Saturday. I fly back in Saturday afternoon, early afternoon. So I'm trying to so I'm trying to pre-film all the videos for next week, including the weekly while. I'm going to have to pre-film that because I'm not going to have time on the road to film it. But I've got a really cute idea on how to make it fun, even though it's going to be pre-filmed, so keep your eyes out for that. But I'm trying to pre-film not only for next week, but for the beginning of the week after, because I'm going to come back on Saturday. I'm going to have to, like, unpack, clean, you know, see family, because they're all excited. It's only going to be a week, but you know how family is. Then I go back to work Monday, and then, the, the, of course, the video's got to continue on Monday. So I've been pre-filming, and I'm trying to get all that done because technically so my workshop it's a monday through thursday so we fly in on monday everyone flies out on thursday but we were told that if you wanted to stay and use a vacation day that the hotel would let you keep your hotel room for three days past the end of the conference and that you would just have to pay for those days so there are a couple people staying and i was thinking you know what? I need to do something. I've never actually gone on like a destination vacation. Ever. And we're gonna be literally across the street from Universal and from Harry Potter World. Now, if you know me, you'll know how much of a Harry Potter absolute nerd I am and used to be as a child. Read all the books, 
Went to the midnight whatevers to get the last couple of books. Went to the midnight premieres of quite a few of the movies. You know, all of that fun stuff. And Harry Potter World opened when I was a senior in high school. So that was what, 2010, 2011? And I was so upset that I never really got to go. Years and years listening to people that weren't even big Harry Potter fans, listening to people who were, all go see them all go and talk about how amazing it was and how great it was. My own family, when I was away at college, actually went to Harry Potter World without me. Yeah, because I was in DC at the time, so they, they just went and I found out when I got like notifications about their pictures on Facebook. So I've been dying to go to Harry Potter World since I was, since it opened. And there's literally no better opportunity for me to do it than now because literally I'm dropped on the doorstep of Universal. All I would have to do is pay for my ticket to Harry Potter World and for however many extra nights at the hotel that I'll be staying at because my job is going to cover Monday through Thursday at the hotel and airfare and food and everything else. So that's going to be my vacation day. I took Friday as a vacation day and I bought myself a Harry Potter World ticket. I had to buy like the two park ticket so that I could ride the Hogwarts Express because <laughs> I'm gonna ride the Hogwarts Express. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more coverage down here and over here on the side but it looks so nice and do it's like this looks like what the Chantecaille looks like on my skin. I'm not sure if I would wear this to work out. I normally when I do work out just don't wear anything but this is a gorgeous foundation. So yeah, I'm super, super excited about the trip. Not only am I gonna actually be working face to face with my whole department for the first time, which is gonna be fun and exciting, I get to stay a little bit and do Harry Potter World. My inner 12 year old is just so excited. So that's why I've been pre-filming and why during that week, so I leave February 4th. So for that week, I'm gonna be a little bit slower at um, getting back to comments like I usually do just because I'm actually going to be at like a conference so I'm not going to be able to jump on my phone and answer comments as much as I would like to but I do read all of them and once I get back to my hotel room at the end of the day I'll try to respond to anyone I missed so a concealer I've actually been trying out I've been mm, about it so far this is the new Fenty concealer so I was watching this in the store waiting for them to dry down on my hand I know you're supposed to go buy your foundation shade but I had shade 160 in the foundation and it was okay for me but the foundation shade looked way too, not the foundation shade, the concealer shade looked really, really like pink, which I'm, I'm not pink, I'm definitely golden. So I picked the next shade down, which was a neutral undertone concealer. So I've tried this out a couple of times and it definitely looks a little bit light with the darker foundation that I'm wearing today. But overall, it is just a tad light. So I think I'm gonna mix it today. And I'm actually going to mix it with another foundation I've been testing, and this is the Milani, Milani, this is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer, and I have the shade 120. Yeah, so this one's just a bit darker. Let's mix you two together. So while I've been super excited about this trip, uh, I don't know exactly why. I mean, I do know, because I have anxiety, but I've just been like an anxious mess the past couple weeks, and I think my... I don't know what it is about my period for the past couple of months, but it's been hitting me really bad. Uh, like extra bad cramps, um, my cycle's been kind of off, and I think it's, it just has to do with stress. Like I've been stressing out about like little things that I don't need to stress out about. <laughs> because I can tell like that it's just my anxiety playing tricks on me when I literally like don't have anything to worry about legitimately. But that I'm still like constantly on edge and like I feel like I'm constantly walking on eggshells but I've actually been doing really good at trying to tackle it so I've gotten myself um, a Google Doc set up where I do like my anxiety worksheet so that's been helping a lot so what you do in an anxiety worksheet is you I made a spreadsheet you don't have to make a spreadsheet but you talk about what you're anxious about and then the worst case scenario that could happen the best case scenario about what can happen and then what's probably going to happen like the mid ground what you think is going to happen and I've been doing that for a couple of little things and so far I've actually gotten two of them over and done with and what actually happened was that last column that what's most likely going to happen 
So it's just a helpful exercise to do when I find myself just like kind of careening into an anxiety attack and it really just helps me calm down and see the whole picture and I'm really glad that I started doing that and I made it a Google Doc so I could access it no matter where I happen to be. I gave myself access at work so if I need to I can jump on my Google Doc there and do it. I have access to it on my phone in case I need to do it there but that's actually been helping a ton. Okay, and I just used, I really don't like this packaging. Let me just clean this shit up. Literally just got this all over my desk and all over me. Ugh. What is it? Like, how hard is it to make nice packaging for a loose powder that you have to tip over into the cap? Come on, guys. So I've been testing out the new Fenty loose powder as well, and I, I hate the packaging. God damn it. Like, it's actually like, I'm considering returning it because that's a lot of money for something that I'm losing a lot of product. So I'm probably either gonna like put the powder into a different container, I'll put it in a Tupperware or something, or I'm gonna return it because that's, it's a lot of money. And it's actually a fairly light shade and sometimes it sits and doesn't blend out along like the edges of my bake. So we'll see if it does that today, but so far, I've just been meh on it. For the rest of my face powder, I'm just gonna jump in with my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light. So let's see, we talked about anxiety. We talked about my work trip. I've also been anxious about my, let me talk about this funny uh, dream that I had, nightmare that I had. So I had, this, this is how I know, it's just my anxiety messing with me because I had this dream where we were at the work trip. Like I was sitting there in the hotel room and that surprise, we were going to a five-star restaurant for dinner and I had nothing to wear because they basically told us, come in what you're comfortable with, jeans, leggings, just don't wear shorts and open-toed shoes, which, okay, I get it. Uh, so that's what I packed. <laughs> so in this dream, for some reason, we suddenly had reservations to this five-star restaurant and everyone had to go. And of course, everyone else had thought ahead and packed a really nice outfit. <laughs> you know, uh, heels, dresses, tuxes, and I was the only one that didn't have anything to wear. <laughs> oh my god, how stupid is that? And that I was freaking out looking in my suitcase trying to figure out what to wear, and I woke up like in a panic for a few seconds. I was like, oh god. Oh, but, oh, oh my god. I've actually, so that's something else. I haven't been sleeping well and I think that ties into the anxiety and everything else and I get waves like this I think I talked about this in one of my other get ready with me's that I'll get waves in my anxiety throughout the year I think the last time it was this bad was probably around September October and then the wave passed and then I was really good throughout like November December and then now it's just kind of coming back but I think this week trip is really going to help because it'll be a change of pace, it'll be a change of scene, and I actually will have a mini vacation at the end of it. So I'm pretty excited, but also a little bit nervous. I'll actually be doing a uh, like a little mini presentation to our department because every everyone's going to be doing one. It's like a class project where each kid has to present. So we're each doing a presentation. So it's stupid as hell to be nervous about it, but I'm just a little bit nervous about it because I'm also the youngest person in our department. The next youngest person is like in their mid thirties, late thirties. So I'm, I'm the youngest person, um, but I've been taking the lead on a lot of our like IT systems kind of things. So I'm giving a presentation on our IT system and specifically how I use the system to generate an ISBN. I know, exciting, riveting, but I'm just tiny bit nervous about that. And I think that is like, blowing out a proportion in the back of my head because the anxiety monster is like you have to be worried about something if you have anxiety you know how it is that you just sometimes your mind needs to grab onto and worry about something even when you don't have anything to worry about so then you start freaking out about little things okay so i don't know if you guys can see this like along the edge of my bake it doesn't look it looks a bit odd so anyway i'm gonna let that bake for just a little bit longer and then i'll probably go back over it with the powder oh and the other thing is like this doesn't fit in like my drawers it's kind of a pain in the butt all right so since i will be traveling soon i'll be packing everything soon so i'm gonna come out with like a, an updated travel makeup bag kind of thing and since i am traveling i didn't want to bring my full pair in that palette palette it's a z palette so it's a little bit more I don't know, nebulous. I was thinking about bringing my 9pan19, the Kat Von D palette, so I'm on the fence about bringing that one or 
one of these. So this is the Tarte Clay Play, the original palette that I really love and I took this the last time I went traveling, but this one doesn't have a uh, face powder in it. It has your bronzer, your contour, and a bunch of like eyeshadows and highlighters. Uh, the Hourglass palette, this is the Unlocked palette, this one has everything except contour. So there's that. So I'm using this one today just to remember how much I liked it. And to think about whether I want to bring it with me. I would like to have kind of an all-in-one palette that I could just reach for while I'm on the road. So I'm thinking most likely I'll probably bring this palette and then a contour because I do want a contour while I'm down there. I'm going to jump into the Tarte palette for my contour. Oh, and if you can't tell, I'm using like completely different brushes than like my usual favorite brushes. I'm getting to the end of testing out all of the affordable brush sets for that video I've been talking about for like forever. So I have a set from BH Cosmetics, I have a set from Wet n Wild, and then I have a set from e.l.f. So I've been testing all of these out. I've washed them once, I want to wash them one more time to see how they hold up. Because if you can see, I can kind of already see the bristles on... The bristles on this Wet n Wild one are kind of coming up and I can see like the lime green or the yellow of the glue, which is a little bit unfortunate because I actually like this powder brush, but if it doesn't last that long, it's not a great investment. And brushes are an investment. So I'm actually really hoping to film that once I get back from my trip. So before I put my highlight on, I'm going to go ahead and wipe away this bake and I'm going to use some of the powder to do that. Okay, that actually looks a lot better than the last time I did this, but the last time I did it, I didn't use a powder to wipe away the bake, I just wiped away the bake, so that might be the key. I'm jumping in with my favorite highlighter and the one that I'm currently panning. This is the Becca Royal Glow Highlighter. I'm still not hitting pan. I want to hit pan on this. be so exciting. I've only panned one highlighter before. Never panned a blush or anything, so we'll see. I've been going for like this super highlighted glowy, faux glowy look, faux <laughs> uh, with this highlighter. I love bringing it up in like a three right there. I love putting a little bit down here, tip of the nose, top of the cupid's bow. All right, so now that our base is done, I'm going to jump off camera and clean up this mess a little bit, do my eyebrows, and then we'll come back for eyes because I did want to do a look with my pen that palette that people have requested that I show how to use, show how to use, show how to do. <laughs> so let's jump to that real quick. All right, guys, and we're back. I just threw on some setting spray to kind of melt all my powders together, and I did my brows. I just did my brows like last night, like plucking and... Uh, like razoring off the top and I've went thinner than normal but I kind of like it what do you think <laughs> so I already primed and set my eyes I just used the shape tape that I'm currently panning so let's jump into the look this is a look I do with the two lighter kind of shades right here so I use new wave edge and then I use the shimmer shade electric so I personally like to go in with edge first so I'll take a fluffier brush this one, I actually used this one in Edge yesterday. <laughs> so, nice fluffy brush. The way that I found that works really well for this palette is I will get a little bit of powder on my brush, tap off the excess, I just do this, but over my floor where I can vacuum or Swiffer or whatever. And then I do three little taps on my hand. So three little taps, brush off the excess, and then I found that this really gives you the perfect amount of product to actually go in on your eye. And then from here, you can build it up if you really want to. I grabbed New Wave and not Edge, but that's fine. I'm still half asleep. So since this isn't Edge, I'm gonna keep this lower, just along this part, like there. So let's do the same thing on the other side, tap dab go so i'm gonna grab another fluffy brush and then go in with edge that yellow right down here same process so i will get pigment on the brush tap it off dab twice and then this goes higher up so i like to blend this in and take this 
almost to my eyebrows. Blending, blending, blending. Yep, so just like that. It looks a little bit neutral, but we're gonna pop on the color in just a second. The next thing I like to do is take a dense like shader brush and take our orange shade New Wave and pack this on my lid. So I'm gonna pack this on my lid because I believe from what I've seen, it really gives more dimension to the shimmer shade that we're gonna put on top of it. So I'm gonna take New Wave and this time I'm just gonna tap off the excess. I'm not gonna dab because I really do wanna load up the color on my lid. So let's tap this on and bring it up just a little bit. Just like that. Give it a quick blend with no more product on the brush. And now we're ready for the shimmer. Tried and true, NYX glitter glue. That would be like, if I were to make t-shirts, except NYX would probably like copyright, not copyright, it's, I'm sure it's trademarked, so. So we're gonna go in with the glitter glue all over the lid and then take the shade electric, the green kind of duochrome shimmer all over the lid. I always get at least a little bit of fallout, so I always brush away whatever fallout might be there before I go to the lower lash line. I like to do my lower lash line before I do liner or mascara just so I can get a look of what like the look is going to look like complete. And my two favorite tools for that, right here. I like a really tiny fluffy blending brush. This is from Morphe. This is an M506. And then this is a flat shader brush. Not flat shader, but it's like a, a flat liner brush. Like it's really, really thin. This is also from Morphe. This is the M432. What I'll do is I'll take the darker shade, so New Wave, onto this thin brush and just really pack that on the outer third of my lower lash line. So pack that in. And then, using the small fluffy brush, taking the lighter shade you use in your transition, in this case, edge, tapping off the excess, and then blending that out. So I'll take this lighter shade all the way in and use it to blend out what we put on the outer third as well. Oh, and I just feel like that really just ties the eye look together, though I did get a little bit of fallout over here still, so let's go in. If the fallout is pretty bad and not coming off, I would go back in with your translucent powder and just like kind of sort of baking again and then brushing that away because that'll help a ton. But that's it for the shadows and you just get this really nice like light pretty look. And this is for me, this is work appropriate so I can wear this to the office, I can wear this now. And normally I would go in with either no mascara or no mascara, no liner and just doing mascara to really open up the eyes or I would just line the actual lash line, no wing or anything and then just put on some mascara. I think I'm just gonna go with mascara because I kind of like how light this is looking. I'm jumping in with my Chantecai mascara. I don't know why I went to tap the excess off. You can't tap the excess off of mascara, Monica, Jesus. I personally have not been wearing a uh, like liner in my waterline with this look, but a nice like white or nude would look really pretty and really help open up your eyes if you want to add that. But that's it for just like my favorite quick look with subculture. If I'm not talking through it and doing it on camera, I can literally do this in like five minutes. Very quick, very pretty. It's it's my favorite. So now for lipstick, I think I'm just gonna go with a darker nude. This is Posh Spice from Jeffree Star. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Let's put this on. And there we go. This is actually pretty cute. I like it. I got the Mickey Mouse ears on. Probably do a little something different to my hair a little bit later, but figured I would end this video here because I'm sure it is plenty long at this point. Thank you guys so much for getting ready with me today. As a reminder, if I can get this video up by Friday, that the next week I will be traveling. Everything will be pre-filmed and pre-posted and scheduled, so I'm going to be a little behind on comments. But I hope you guys like all the videos that are be going up that week. If you guys want to see anything about my trip, feel free to follow me on all of my social medias. I'll probably be posting stories, pictures, especially when I go to Harry Potter World. So I have an Instagram, I have Twitter. I'm getting better at using Twitter. I wasn't that great at it before. But everything will probably be posted to my Instagram and on my stories. So if you want to 
you know, watch along with my trip, make sure you follow me on there. Thank you again for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.